Don't touch me, Gabriel. This is trying to silence you. Don't try to fuck me, Gabriel. Sora. I'm Kevin, you know me as Cadences. And I'm Gabriel. And today's topic is our toxic traits. Oh my god. <laughs> okay, so Sora. <laughs> I really want to know what's your toxic trait. My toxic trait in a relationship is I like to self sabotage. Oh my god, that's nice. I have like, what does I mean? often catch an attitude for no reason. <laughs> okay, but at least she's self aware. Yeah. We love a self aware queen. Then do you want them to like, Chase after you when you when you yeah. have an attitude. So I will just catch an attitude for no reason, right? Okay, example, I had this ex, right? That was always late. So he was like late for five minutes. He was supposed to pick me up. Okay, that that was kind of cranky. Right. But straight away, right? I go into his car already, right? I sit like this. <laughs> <laughs> then after <laughs> he said, uh, hi babe, how's your day? Okay. <laughs> And then, like, the tension was there already because I didn't want to reply him. Then after he was like, babe, we have to work through this. You know, it takes two hands to clap. I had sunglasses and on. And one right. hand to fat. I just... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So basically, I did this. What is that? Because <laughs> you say it takes two hands to clap. <laughs> <laughs> but were you pissed? Because you want him to like, eh, hey, baby, don't do No, the you whole know? time, you just stay quiet. Huh? Okay, stay quiet. You're supposed to be like, He's driving, how expect him to do that? Like, how to fire him like, one hit. Bro, I can do this properly as a guy, right? Drive. Safety, Maybe safety, bro. No, the thigh. Oh. Maybe you okay. can. <laughs> <laughs> I can vouch for it. Sora has her moment. She's always like, I don't want to see this guy anymore. I'm done with him. He's out of my life. And then one minute later, um, Kevin, can I bring him as my plus one? <laughs> <laughs> so, what's your toxic trait? Actually, mine is like her. I also self sabotage a lot. But it's a different, I have a reason for it. I've literally like meditated as to why I'm toxic and there's a rational explanation from it. So it's because I got hurt very badly from relationships last time, right? So now, like, as a way to protect myself, I like build very high walls. How high? Like, <laughs> like if you jump off it, you fucking die that kind of high. <laughs> like, it's like. So like I don't let it down very easily. So whenever I see something that like might potentially lead to something, right, I will like try and self-sabotage. And whenever a guy seems too good for me, I get very turned off. Why do you self-sabotage? Because I don't know, maybe I feel like I don't deserve it. That kind of thing. I have, like, I have to do shadow work. Don't touch me, Gabriel! Don't this is trying to don't. Sire me, bro. Stop so trying to sad. fuck me, Gabriel. So Stop trying to fuck me, Gabriel. Okay, but... <laughs> I can't accept it when someone's too nice to me. And then on the other hand, when someone's like really bad for me, I become more turned on by it. <laughs> I need to go therapy, I guess. No, you do. I... Not you guess. <laughs> <laughs> Any therapy wanna sponsor me? Okay, Wait, yeah. so if someone says something nice to you, you also cannot take like a compliment and stuff? No, they have to say in a if way genuine, that's like... If it's very genuine. Yeah, but they have to say in a way that's like, not too... Like nice banter. Yeah, like banter. Yeah, I, like, okay, I, I like okay. bantering in a relationship. Then maybe it's just like the type of guy you like also. But I still think I need therapy. Okay, yeah, yeah but yeah, you, you do. You do. <laughs> Honestly, you really do, yeah. Just to mention, it's only been 9 days into 2023 and I've already had like 3 separate mental breakdowns. I thought you said 7. <laughs> and I'm a compulsive liar too. So that goes my another toxic trait. <laughs> Moving on from me. Okay, this is kind of surprising, but same, self sabotaging. Whenever like uh, the relationship is going like too peaceful for a long period of time, right, I will end up trying to like cause fights out of nothing or like what Sora said, like have an attitude out of nowhere. Then I went to go and trace back like the reason why. And the reason why is because growing up, right, my family was always constantly fighting. And the only time that it would actually be peace in the house right, is right after a fight. So what happened is that if I'm in a relationship with someone or dating someone, and it was like too peaceful, right? My anxiety will start to go up. Because I feel like there's a fight about to happen. It's just like the trend that you... Yes. I'll be like, wow, shit, I cannot take it anymore. Already. I need to like, cause something. So I realised I have this self-sabotaging thing also. Actually, why all our toxic traits are quite similar? <laughs> <laughs> but I relate to yours the most. Because mm. I feel like last time my family also a lot of fights. And plus all my relationships that I had, it was like a roller coaster. So I actually went to therapy for this. Oh. And the therapist told me because I'm so used to the trend of the roller coaster emotions. Now that I'm in like a stable relationship, right? It's like something's wrong, ah. Something uh. right? Yeah, yeah. It's something's wrong, ah. Uh. Especially like when I like got cheated on, right? I feel okay. A lot of men in my life that I know cheat, so. Mm. It's very hard to think that someone is not a cheater. True. By who? <laughs> anyway. Anyways, moving on. 
My family also like, there's a lot of like fights and everything. Then like people leaving and stuff, right? My father left with like another woman. And apparently he got another woman pregnant or something. So I might have a half sibling walking around. Oh my god. So if anyone around my age looks like me, right? We might be siblings. Maybe the porn star. What? The porn star? Insert picture here. I realized I have this attachment style called like anxious attachment style. Mm. And it's basically when you grow in a very hot and cold family, then sometimes your father shows you love, sometimes your father doesn't show you love. For anxious, anxious attachment style people, right, once you get hurt, it, it goes really, really bad. The opposite of anxious attachment is avoidant. So like usually the avoidant will attract the anxious. Then you'll get into a very toxic cycle of the anxious chasing the avoidant, then the avoidant ignore the anxious. Then right. you will like reiterate the cycle. Right. So do you do like a check before you date someone? But the thing is, when you go and date someone, right, it really start off as like friends. But when it gets more serious, lah. By then, I already would have like developed feelings already. So even if I know the attachment style, I would create excuses like, oh, maybe he'll be different. Then there's something you need to change, huh? Yeah. That's why I'm single now and I'm very happy. My only goal in life right now is to be rich so I can pay people to shut up. <laughs> no, pay me, pay me, pay me. Uh, no, pay no, me. no, it's okay. It's just like a pros. It's like a pros. <laughs> Okay, so it sounds like all our toxic traits come from insecurity and trauma. So, why y'all never do anything? Ah? <laughs> why you never go therapy? I mean, Not it yet. is easy to go to therapy. Mm. But I realise one thing is, a lot of us, right, we, all this stems from like family. So when you're raised in that way, right, that's how you know love to be. Yeah. And that's yeah. normal to you, you know. So if something is normal to you, example like breathing, eating and sleeping, right, how do you change that? I mean, for me, I did try going for therapy, but I realised that it's better if I work alone. I'll tell myself that I'll put off being in love or being in a relationship until I solve all these issues because the last thing I want is to drag someone into it. Oh my gosh. There's something that Carl Jung, he's like a philosopher, psychologist, and he described this term as like shadow work. So like basically the human curve is like that, right? Then there's like all the positive stuff we want in life and then after it goes down. So people only like look at all the stuff they want to achieve in life. But they don't look like below the curve, all like the stuff you have to work on. So for mine, like the insecurity, I think is like abandonment. If someone like your, like as close to you, like your dad, can leave you, what makes you think that other people cannot? So that's the mentality I have. So that, that's the mentality I grew up with and it's like something that I've been struggling to like break free from. You have to consciously like rewire your mind. Because your brain is like a muscle, right? So yeah. you always have to like exercise it every day. So let's say if I, I'm fear of abandonment, right? I will kind of in a way attract people who would act out the abandonment. That is familiar Correct, that's familiar to you. you. So over time, it kind of like reinforces, like you said, like the muscle is a mem- the brain is a memory, like the brain is a memory. <laughs> the muscle the is a memory, is a, bro. The brain is a muscle. <laughs> Last time growing up, right, I always thought that people going to therapy were people that like had some mental issues. But then as I grew older, right, I realised that actually, I think everybody should at some point of their life go and try. Like at least once, even if you yeah. think that you don't have any like problems or issues, I think it's good to like have a like little checkup, you know? I ended up going for therapy. Uh. So we look at it, right? A lot of our problems come from family. I was thinking back the other day, right? I was like, if let's say like person A, right, is being mistreated by their dad or their mom, then as they're being mistreated, the natural thing would be like, oh yeah, I'll probably never treat my kid ever like that in the future. But then end up when they have kids, they also do it to the kid. My therapist told me that the more you don't want to be like yeah, your parents, the more you the more you'll turn out like yeah. your parents. And then I realised that it's a cycle. It's only until you go to therapy and they kind of dig out all of these things. It's like, oh yeah, actually I have so many things that are affecting me. And to break like the cycle as what he was saying, right? I feel like really you need to go and talk to someone about it. Someone can really help you and keep you accountable most of all. It's more like a guidance rather than mm. telling me how to feel. Mm. And I think when she asks me questions, right, then it unlocks like parts of my brain. Yes. And I think one thing amazing about therapy is that I always thought therapy would give me the solutions, but it's not. Like, they ask you questions to guide you. But that means also that the answer is within yourself. Like, you can find it. But I also read this study, right, on the other hand, right, that too much therapy can become a crutch. These people, they, they tried to test if, like, prolonged therapy would actually help. And in the end, it actually like, became bad for a person. So I think at some point of time, you need to get off it, so you cannot keep using it as a crutch or something. Like you'll be too reliant on your therapist. Correct. My therapist told me that there are people who go up to her at like 3am, like her house. And yeah, and it also will like affect my therapist's mental mm, health. Yeah. I didn't know this, but I thought it was quite amazing that therapists have their own therapists. Oh yeah, you definitely need yeah. to uh, if you are being exposed to everyone's trauma every It's day. like you're just absorbing everything. Yeah. Yeah. Quite tiring uh, to be a therapist. What are the worst relationship fights that you guys have had? So basically, um, as I said, I'm anxious attachment style, right? So I know that I'm anxious attachment style, so I'll build up walls. But the moment I let them down, I will fall very, very deep, very, very hard, very fast. There'll come a time where I will develop feelings for this person. And 
I would start to like overthink a lot. For example, like if they don't reply the text quite fast enough. So there was this one time, it wasn't even anything, you know. It was literally someone that I talked to for like one week. And he saw me as a friend, but then I saw him as like a potential date. And he replied me for like one day because he was busy with work and he like does work at night. Then I spammed his entire telegram like, wow, you really like ghosting me right now? I can't believe it. Then he just replied me like, can you chill? What? <laughs> I was just working. I feel the worst feeling is when you, after you spam, right? Then actually like they not do anything, then you feel that bad. Yeah, so there is that. Okay, so you know your anxious attachment, right? Yeah. I have an experience with someone like you, but I'm an avoidant. These kind of things happen so many times, right? I keep having to reassure him. And then I went out with my girlfriends and there were guys there as well. Lah. He just suddenly started spamming me in a club. He was like, because of you, I have anxiety. Because of you, I have depression. I oh, hate shit. you. No, you're yeah, like, no. you're, you're so bad for me. Mm. And I was like, <laughs> I double take because you know cannot reply in a club. Yeah, I'll be yeah, tipsy. Yeah. What if I say the wrong thing? Yeah, yeah. So after that, I just double take. Wow, men's went off the rail. Eh. Spam call me like a hundred plus times throughout the night. Eh. Until I reached home and I called him and he was like raging over the phone. He was like, Are you crazy? I told you that. I'm anxious. I'm depressed. How can you not care about me? I'm gonna kill myself. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> and then after it just got super down la. He just started screaming and by then I already detached already. I was mm. like, I didn't do anything. And he was like, aren't you gonna ask about me? Blah blah blah. blah. And I was like, uh, yeah, how are you? He was like, you don't even sound sincere, stop asking. And then I was like, uh, okay, then I'm tired already. Can I go to sleep? He was like, you have to go to sleep now? Wow, I tell you, it was so bad eh. I think he already really painted bad. a picture that you did something. Yeah. And that's why you didn't care about him. No, and it's a repeating yeah. cycle, man. Like, every single time, I would comfort him, you know. Because I already sort of fixed my uh, attachment style to be more secure. Right. And I know how it feels like to be you also. So uh, I will go and comfort. But this is to a stage where it's like too much. Eh? If you're not willing to help yourself, don't make me help you. Even if I'm anxious like that, right, I will never ever like do that. At most, if I feel like I cannot handle it right now, I'll just end the connection. I'll be like, I'm sorry, I don't think this is healthy for me right now. I'll just end the connection. Then I'll go and sort my shit out. Then in the future, I'll come back to it again if I if I need to. I heard this one line once in like a YouTube video, and I think I resound with it. Like they say, like your men your mental health is not your fault, but it's your responsibility. Yeah, so it's not your fault that you have these issues, but it's your responsibility to go seek therapy, to find out what's wrong, to fix it, so you stop affecting your own life and other people. I was say one in my recent years, I was dating somebody, and every time we <laughs> fight, right, or I got something to talk about, he will like listen to me and fall asleep, like <gasps> during the fight. During the fight. <laughs> Were you, I don't know. Did you scream at him and stuff? <laughs> no, he's like... Then how you just like... <laughs> slam him <laughs> He's like... I'll be like, what the hell? <laughs> I'll be like, what the fuck? Can you just listen to me? So it's like, we'll be talking. Then, you know, whenever after maybe a, like three sentences, you expect someone to say something. That's right? why he like quiet. <laughs> he just like... Mm. Every time, like, maybe after like 15 minutes, I see him like falling asleep. <laughs> like, huh? This is important, but you're falling asleep. <laughs> I, I dated an avoidant before who was also like that. It's either he falls asleep, he drives, change the music on Spotify, right? Or he just like blank stare and then he just zone out. You can see like there's no soul in his eye anymore. <laughs> the worst one, right, is like he would stare at me and he would like smile and then he would laugh at me. Eh. Like what the fuck? Oh That's like huh? psychotic eh. That is like can you imagine you just like like telling me shit that I'm just like... <laughs> 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 to me, it just doesn't make sense. Like, if I'm together with you, means I value your opinion with you. So when you're telling me things like I will want to listen, understand. No la, like, like how do they them, like, like just? I feel it's gotten yeah. to a point, right? That I keep repeating because you don't change, right? And, and then, then he, he gets tired of it. Yeah. yeah. And then he also shut off. But then we also uh, get tired of it, what? Who wants to nag you 24-7 like I'm mother? just like the one that wants to approach the problem. But right. you're the one that just wants to leave it as Okay, it but to be fair, we don't really know the context. La. Maybe it's like, you really tell him a lot of times, then he's just like... Uh, but if she has to tell him a lot of times, then it's an issue. La. Like, if she tells him one time, two time, okay. Three time, four time, five time, six time, that's gonna drive someone crazy. So are you someone that will just say sorry to like, end the fight? Okay, maybe this is the engineer in me. Uh. But for me, right, I feel like... Yeah, maybe this is the engineer in me. But for me, right, 
I don't end the conversation until the problem is solved. Or at least I see like there's a way to get the problem solved. And to me, right, sorry does solve the emotional aspect of the problem. But in terms of the practical aspects, right, a lot of things like need to change or some opinions need to change. So you won't just say sorry just to like... No. I would say sorry and then I will go to solutions because I'm very solutions based. So like if we talk already, right, there must be a solution that comes out of it that we can both work on together. If you just this person says sorry, it just feels very empty or like ah, then then what? You know? I understand that some people say sorry just because like there's no solutions and stuff like that. But for you guys, right, let's say like if someone just says sorry to you, like, is it enough? Like what is enough like beyond the sorry? You have to understand how how the person is, what? I mean when you're in a relationship, you understand how the person works. So for me, I need like someone to tell me, okay, so if this situation occurs in the future, like what you say, then we're gonna do this. Yeah. Like I think for girls, if they feel like your sorry is not enough, right? Then it probably means that she don't feel the sincerity. Like example, if let's say she's my girlfriend, right? And I say, I it, am. uh <laughs> so I say, uh, okay, I'm sorry, I understand what I did. Then she come on will be like, huh, what what is that kind of apology compared to hey babe, I'm really sorry lah. Next I know I understand that like Whatever I did did not make you feel loved. Next time I'll reply you faster or things like that. Yeah. So sorry real. solution, ma. Yeah. It's always sorry solution. Yeah, then she will like feel like, oh okay, she, he understands yeah. and stuff like that. Then make up for it. Lah. What's so hard about that? You say sorry, done, go to sleep, man. I think a good story has three components. First, say sorry. Second of all, like repeat the problem so that you're both on the same page and you understand the problem. Then third is the solution. And yeah, apply. then after that, apply. then you apply. like do like the manja manja stuff. What's manja manja? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> Yeah, I don't think I'm made for relations. I do not think I'm made for relations. I'm that, that disgust. No, you and then you like. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> but no, no, no. something like sorry is overrated, Yon. Sorry, my test like come out when I open my mouth too big. It's a get reflex. So to sum up today's episode, as I said just now, our mental health is not our fault, but it's our responsibility. So if you feel that there's an issue, or like people keep telling you there's an issue, maybe just ask yourself like what you can do to improve on it. Go seek therapy, go seek help, Google it. Jayos, it's not the end. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching this episode. We hope you enjoyed it. And if you guys want us to cover any topics, please comment down in the comment section below. Bye! 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 Bye. Bye.